Good evening, everyone. Once again, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, good evening, everyone. Once again, thank you very much for joining us on uh, the Sri Lanka Institute of Marketing, the National Institute of Marketing that is working on making our marketers future ready. So, you know, Sri Lanka Institute of Marketing have done a lot of work in this space over the last couple of decades. So I don't have to introduce what Sri Lanka Institute of Marketing is, but nevertheless, uh, it's my it's my responsibility as the moderator for this session to remind you all that Sri Lanka Institute has been working from 1972 uh, towards uplifting the economic prosperity of the country. Now, Sri Lanka Institute of Marketing um, amidst all the other work is also always driving competencies, skills and uh, talents uh, within the marketing fraternity in our country. Now, last year, um, we uh, took this bold initiative to take the country forward amidst the COVID-19 crisis and we started a campaign called Restart Sri Lanka. Now this year, uh, to keep that momentum going, so we have introduced the second phase of uh, Restart Sri Lanka and we are bringing this webinar series to you as uh, future ready marketing live webinar series. You've been with us over the last couple of weeks we have brought you expertise from various uh, different expertise, um, various um, backgrounds, global as well as local. So today we have a very, very interesting session uh, in line with this. Uh, we have an expert who, who would be the best fit to talk about uh, today's topic. Now, among many other discussions, um, you know, we, we discussed various interesting topics of, uh, you know, marketing, but today, we're going to discuss something extraordinary. Now, to talk about this extraordinary topic, I'm going to introduce today's guest speaker. Uh, this speaker, this the guest of today, has been in the area in in the marketing expertise for 20 years and uh, of regional business to business marketing uh, with an experience and expertise in technology and te telecommunication industries. She is a mathematician by academic training, started her career in IT as a software programmer and uh, pivoted to product marketing positions before moving into senior regional marketing management roles 13 years ago. So she's been a senior marketing management position for last 13 years and she's a data driven marketer. Very important aspect for marketers today and with two decades of experience encompassing strategic planning, brand development, media and analyst relations. Also, uh, she is expert in demand marketing, partner marketing and PNL management as well. Now, this uh, expert of ours today is uh, working at Microsoft. She's responsible for driving modern marketing transformation across the business, leading marketing thought leadership and landing customer marketing in uh, and, and uh, you know, uh, and driving customer marketing in the region, specifically in the Asia Pacific region. So uh, ladies and gentlemen, the future marketers of Sri Lanka, please welcome the APAC CMO lead of Microsoft, Stacy Sia. Stacy, over to you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much. Really delighted to be here this evening, everyone. Hello, how is everyone? Let me just uh, now flip over to share my slide to make sure that comes up. Uh, and let me know if that's showing right now. Yeah, it is up All there. Up there? Yes. Oh, good stuff, thank you. So privileged to be here. Um, you know, one of the things when I asked um, Aruz earlier was uh, we were doing this prep session. So, hey, is this like dinner time for you guys in uh, Sri Lanka? Because I want to make sure that, uh, you know, I don't have a hungry audience. So he assured me that no worries, uh, it's still early for dinner uh, in Sri Lanka right now. Cool. So privileged to be here today um, to share with you on this topic regarding uh, digital transformation. Um, and I think there's one thing, you know, um, I find that Mark Tears today, we are in a very good position, uh, literally, to actually be in the driving seat to, to drive this transformation. And one of the key things I wanted to take you through or share you this, this evening is a, a couple of things. One is, you, you know, just take a look back in terms of what has occurred in the last um, couple of years on the marketing side. Uh, I, I come with, um, you know, largely B2B marketing. Um, I think one of the things I've seen and observed is that whole fusion 
of uh, B2C uh, marketing into B2B, which is a very interesting uh, transformation that's happened over the past couple of years. Um, and one of the other things that uh, has been occurring in the last uh, you know, uh, few years is, and furthermore now accelerated is because of the COVID situation where you know, it propels us to do more things online. So today we have pivoted to the pure, I would say, uh, marketing to a digital world. And that's quite different from digital marketing. Think about it that way. Right, so that's one of the things I want to talk through. And uh, in this evening session, I also want to take the opportunity to share with you the journey we have here at Microsoft uh, in terms of uh, how we made that change, pivot to, uh, to make this uh, uh, change within uh, our marketing organization. Um, and I will share with you some of the insights there. And, uh, and lastly, I would like to uh, close it off with a session in terms of giving you a couple of uh, you know, key takeaways in terms of if you're looking to start your own journey today within your organizations, what are some of the um, you know, top three things you can be looked at kind of like a step by step uh, in that way uh, for you to get started. And if you already started along the journey, then how you could then take it to the next level, right? So um, without further ado, let me just uh, move on and get started. Now, one of the key things, you know, we think about marketing today, right? It's no longer just about the four P's of marketing, right? The product price, you know, placements, promotion, right? It's, it's all about the experience that we deliver to our customers. Now you think about it, uh, actually in the past, for example, social media platforms like Facebook, Twitter, right? And today, Instagram, right? They're all often used by B2C. But today, B2B marketers are increasingly leveraging these platforms as part of the outreach journey to engage their customers. And this is true here also at Microsoft today. Now, think about the apps you use today, the ones you won't want to live without. I think that our customer experience facing apps important. And one of the key things that Forrester uh, showed in his research is that um, tells us that you know, there are many other factors but customer experiences determine whether companies thrive in profit or struggle in fate. So it's not surprising in today's digital economy, customers are the new market makers, shaping industries and changing how business compete and win. Now we think about what has just transpired uh, literally in the last one and a half, slightly over one and a half years. Uh, COVID changed quite a few things, especially on the back of what I call the customer's buying behavior. And one of the key things we notice is that this pivot towards customers doing more and more things remote. And one, one of the things we observe is that, look, they, you know, today, if you're looking for something and likewise for our customers, right, even our own experience, that like if you don't know something and looking for something, the first thing you do is you search, you go online to look for it. And the access to information today has really literally empower each and every one of our customers to have an informed point of view. So the studies have shown that actually 75% of the buyer's journey starts with a search online. Now this change in buying behaviors actually started years ago, but now coupled with the fact that the face-to-face -face meetings are reduced tremendously owing to COVID, customers have de developed a preference for remote. Thus, the need for an organization to enhance their marketing and sales capabilities to be more effective in meeting the customer's needs becomes increasingly important on the back of that. So, if you think about digital transformation, right, which is a topic for, that we have today, now, ultimately what we are observing, also not just uh, at Microsoft, but also in our customers across many industries, right, we are seeing the impact of digital technology on their business, the industry they operate in, and more importantly, the customers. Now, some of the traditional business that does not have online presence, uh, and let me give you an example, um, healthcare, for instance. When I get sick in the past, I have to go to the hospital or the clinic, get checked by a doctor, I then pick up my medicine, and then I go home. Today, I can actually use tele or remote medicine apps that allows me to see my doctor online from the comfort of my home, especially if I'm sick, I don't want to get out, or uh, no energy to get to the, to the clinic. And uh, after that consult is done with the doctor online, the medicine actually gets dispatched to my home within hours. And this is happening today already in Singapore. Um, and that's one of the things that 
what digital transformation has done in terms of changing the experience for the customers. Uh, so we talk about digital transformation, ultimately it's like, we're really essentially talking about the outcomes. The purpose is to generate value. And today at Microsoft, uh, we do that. We help our customers uh, to build their digital capabilities into every aspect of, the of their business to drive these outcomes. Now, the key thing is there is a change in customers' expectations today. The digitization of business, especially on the on the back of COVID, that is accelerated. You know, there was a there was a joke was going around that look who who actually drives digital transformation, the key driver of that transformation. Is it the CTO, CIO, or is it COVID? Well, the answer is actually the latter. We actually accelerated um, a lot of uh, business going more and more online. And on the back of these changes, actually does present a set of challenges to B2B marketers, especially ourselves. And one of the key things to think through is the whole experience, customer experience we talk about. They look at us today, we all have mobile phones. And we use to do most of our daily live tasks just with a thumb. We can receive recommendations based on location, you know, and, and previous purchases, for example. Now, B2B customers have come to expect the same level of personalization. They expect that not only I know their names, whether they are CFO or they are CIO, that we're able to send them, for example, a business value paper on how to transform modern finance, rather than invite them to a technical webinar. And there's also expectations that we do this with full integrity on data protection and privacy. And this becomes increasingly important, especially when we're driving more and more engagement online. All our customers today expect that when our inside sales call them, that they know that they attended, for example, the event last month on artificial intelligence in retail space. And that you know our inside sales team will not talk to them about some cool version of teams, for example, for healthcare. So the whole consumer experience becomes a new baseline to which the experience you need to provide as a B2B brand that increasingly become more and more uh, prevalent in terms of the expectations of your customers. Now. The other challenge is in terms of what is happening uh, at the board level, in terms of the need for us to be able to please our bosses, literally, you know, it becomes a more and more challenging because the, there's a, there is a uh, expectation also that we need to understand um, not just our customers, priorities, we are also required to know how to scale up to drive a meaningful engagement with our customers. So the question also is, how do you go about organizing this data estate? Because, you know, as marketers, we do collect a lot of data along the way. You run a series of campaigns and activities. You collect this information in terms of what the customers have engaged us on, with us on, what content they've consumed and all that. So how do you actually organize this data to ensure that we're able to surface meaningful insights on the customer's behavior and potential disruptive opportunities? whether a mark, the customer or the prospect is actually in market and ready to be called upon, for example, by our inside sales team, right? It's all about timing. Now, on that on that aspect itself, and I think about it, although today we're in the COVID world, um, you know, we do a lot of things online, but there is that possibility that we're going to go back into an offline mode. Literally, the face-to-face -face part will come at some point in time. But one of the key things we notice is also that, you know, I think this online engagement will continue to stay and that we'll eventually probably pivot to what's what I call a hybrid kind of engagement model. Part of this online, you know, we're doing things like what we're doing right now, um, having a, a session like that online, or it could be doing it face to face. But that hybrid approach is going to come. So the question is, when you have such a hybrid approach and we also know that engaging uh, with customers and prospects, they have different places where they consume information and look for information and engage with people, right? To get that information. So this multi-touch aspect of self itself is a very important facet to factor in. Now we've got multi-touch, multi got online and offline. How do you pull that all that together in terms of delivering those insights, right? 
uh, and to drive meaningful engagement with your customers. So that's another another challenge, right? In terms of what our bosses and actually the board expects a marketing uh, a marketeer or a CMO to be able to deliver on. And the third aspect in terms of challenges is around, you know, with this change we're seeing, right? We are also challenged, right? If, if many of you are in, in this session are, are, are head of marketing or uh, running a department, we are also challenged to transform our teams. I don't know about you, but in my experience of uh, B2B marketing, many marketers comes with fantastic expertise, for example, in program management. But today, we need to have a mix of creative profiles to ensure the experience remain memorable, unique for our customers and prospects. We need people who know how to write blogs, design websites, you know, invent new experiences. We also need to have the ability within the marketing organization to be able to do positions or position targeting, retargeting, remessaging. Um, the other aspect is also the need to understand what the data we're collecting, how to correlate it, and ultimately link it to the marketing automation uh, applications we are using uh, in order to drive the engagement with the customers. So it's quite a daunting task to some extent, right? If especially to say, look, if I'm looking at my team right now, how do I build up these skill sets? Because I need the skills. Now, do we hire more people or we look to retrain our existing team members in order to be able to um, meet that changing expectations and landscape uh, to deliver the experience that's required and to differentiate, create what I call a differentiated uh, brand experience uh, for the customers, for your target audience, and ultimately also deliver what I call predictable pipeline ad uh, for the sales team that is repeatable and scalable. And, and these two words itself, I think, will be some of the key things that I, I would like to take you take away tonight is about how do you do it repeatedly and be able to scale it. And that's where the gist in terms of the transformation of uh, the key, one of the key benefits of pivoting to uh, uh, the, the digital transformation from a marketing perspective, that is one of the big benefits that you can look to get and derived out from this change. Now with that, I want to now share with you, you know, um, the Microsoft story uh, in terms of how we made uh, that change and um, why and what triggered us to, to make this change. And we started on this transformation ourselves. That was almost about four years ago uh, when we decided that we have to make this change on the back of these challenges. And ultimately what really pushed us to make this change is that, look, we need to be able to deliver a differentiated customer experience. We know that customers have choices. And today, more so in uh, when, when COVID hit, right? I think most a lot of organizations really, you know, banked on in terms of your existing customer base. That is very, very important to keep them. Uh, and it's, sometimes you, you've got to remember, as a marketer, I used to do a lot of this. I do a lot of demand generation. My focus was a lot on new customer acquisition. But don't forget, it takes a lot of effort, a lot of dollars to get new customers. After you bring them on board, it's very important to retain them and increase the lifetime value of the customers in the time that they are a client uh, of your organization. And that is something that you know you must always keep in mind that it's not just acquisition, it's a retention and upsell motion that's equally important. And that's one of the things that we wanted to also um, achieve on the back of uh, our digital transformation uh, at Microsoft. So let me just kick off and, and give you a little background in terms of um, you know, how we used to run marketing at Microsoft. Now the marketing teams uh, at, um, in our headquarters in Redmond and the field team uh, right across the group, right? We, 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 we were building numerous discrete programs then, uh, but very few of these programs we had were connected. And each marketing program actually targeted customers we engage them, we action them on those engagements, but all in silos. So as a result, we created thousands of individual funnels. Um, and essentially it was based on a one touch activity. And on the back of that, then we deemed that and created that as a lead, uh, which is the, we then passed on to the sales team. So one of the challenges that we had uh, back then was the whole process where right, the connect between sales and marketing 
it's not always consistent in terms of the handoff and how we measure success then was not necessary you know um in terms of the best um a best outcome that we could drive or best um, method we could uh, have uh, leveraged on so it's quite common then as a result of this you know we hand hand leads to sales to fall up and sales said look guys this lead is just you know just just looking just just in the awareness stage right you're not quite ready to have a conversation with us and as a result you know it also creates a challenge for our sales team in terms of they can't really differentiate between a low quality lead and a high quality lead and by high quality it means that the prospect is actually in market and ready to have a conversation and likelihood of them converting into the you know evaluation or selection stage uh, of the buyer's journey um, may actually potentially happen so that was a challenge that we had um, um, uh, back then when we when we first started um, with, with this journey. So what we then did was um, we look we came together uh, from a sales and marketing perspective and decided look we, we need to come together we, we, and define a common set of languages uh, in terms of how we look to drive uh, these engagements with our customers. We need to we agree on some that how we're gonna what a good qualified lead should look like. Uh, and we establish, you know, what are some of the challenges that we have the, as in the current stage and what the future state we want to go towards. And we got that all locked in and then we think it through because Microsoft is a software company. We have the ability to use our technology to, to build the solutions, right? So as a result of that, we used and leveraged the three clouds we have, which is Azure, um, our Dynamics platform, the database, and our Microsoft um, 365 platform. Uh, to develop, develop a solution that um, that we're able to operationalize um, globally. Now, when we're lo looking through this process, uh, one of the key things is when we're designing is that look, what is really, really important for us is to have the customer at the heart and center of that transformation. It's super important to keep that in mind because it's about the experience that we want to deliver to the customer. So with that, I just want to also, you know, I cut that long story short. I'm going to show you the changes that has actually happened uh, in Microsoft as a result of this uh, transformation or this approach that we took. What you see on the left side is what we had before, and what you see on the right side are the outcomes that um, that we moved to uh, on the back of this transformation. And what this essentially mean at the end of the day was with through this change, it helped deliver unique outcomes for everyone involved. As a marketeer, we found a scalable way to get customers insights and it to help us enable more targeted marketing programs. From a sales or seller perspective, through this transformation, they were able to receive higher quality leads from the market, from the marketing department based on a variety of what are called demand signals from customers. And from the customer's perspective, they were able to experience richly personalized journey all across the points interaction they have with us, including digital. So what we did when we did this transformation journey, we implemented at the time when pre-COVID. So we did as a company quite a lot of events, face-to-face -face events and activities. We were able to build that process and structure in the field in order to collect all these data points of offline activities with these customers and put it into the same platform. So we could actually then triangulate the interactions the customers have with us across online and offline. So that this change itself essentially helped us pivot away from one touch technical programs execution to focus on long term value creation with our customers. So that's one of the key things that change. Now, how do you go about making this change is the secret sauce I'm going to share with you right now. And, and this is enabled through um, what we call uh, we built this um, team. We call it the, the global demand center right uh, and GDC for short and this is this is essentially what we built to transform all our marketing activities uh, to deliver an always on 
integrated customer engagement. Now, with this approach itself, essentially what you see on the left side of this diagram here is that it brings together the field marketing tactics. So what we do in the region, for example, events, demand generation, social marketing, and all that together with the COP led tactics. All right, they run paid media, for example, from COP into what I call a global engagement program. Now, this GDC itself is pretty massive. It's, uh, it's massively scalable. That was on the back when we designed this, uh, this, um, this uh, build this team and build this platform. It was designed to create efficiency of acquisition and also to manage the customer's life cycle for Microsoft. One of the key things that this uh, platform does is that it nurtures these leads that come through from all these activities that we generate on the left side here through programmatic engagement that are aligned with the marketing activities. And these engagement programs are aligned to, for example, our products, is aligned to industry, um, and, and as these customers go through these various engagement, the machine actually picks up what we call their behavior in that process. And on the back of that, then we're able to score these prospects based on the engagement they have with us using our machine learning algorithm. And then we aggregate it at the account level, which is really important because just imagine, you know, if for, for your business, you will probably have some top strategic, strategic accounts you want to focus on. Then you get you got some, uh, you know, uh, I call major accounts or, or, or top 100 accounts you want to work on. And then probably you have the, the other white space you want to go after. So if it's strategic accounts or top accounts, those are the ones you really want to pay more attention on in terms of how they're engaging uh, with you as a company, in terms of their sales cycle uh, with you. So we actually built that in into um, this um, um, design itself to make sure that we're able to even have the lens at the account level. And by doing that itself, it enables us to actually then automatically route these leads when they are when they are ready and scored by the machine that these are sales ready leads or sales ready for a, a inside sales for example to have a conversation with them uh, and then we actually pipe it through as you see here on the right hand side to the respective teams it's also through this uh, um, and over time all right this took time for us to build and 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 sometimes you know for example um, some of you maybe have used our office 365 uh, and that's all purely online, you know, and so through this um, different um, um, machine learning that we have built and baked into the platform, we're able to discern if the customer is actually, you know, looking for something that they want to just purchase and self-serve online, we'll send them to the web store, or they're actually looking for something maybe perhaps around security, for instance, uh, security related solutions that really needs a uh, conversation with uh, a subject matter expert uh, to help them on with their, with their journey. And that's how we, we essentially built this through and put this together um, so that we're able to um, um, really automate the whole process uh, and, and deliver that uh, level of scale that, that is needed. And on the back of that, essentially, you know, it delivers a better customer experience. Um, it's automated in the way that uh, we can then focus our efforts from a marketing perspective on what really matters. It gives us insights in terms of how we can calibrate uh, our campaigns and programs. We understand what's working, what's not in terms of the touch points, and then we can help us, uh, you know, as on the back of that retarget uh, prospects that way. One of the learnings we had uh, on the back of implementing this is that we got to the point where the data we collected in, uh, informed us that we literally could get four to, four to seven times uh, higher uh, uh, conversion rates um, on the back of uh, building a, a, a um, you know, automated platform this way to, to, to deliver the insights to us. And, and I think that's a very important aspect because ultimately at mark, from a marketing perspective, one of the key relationships with sales team we have is really to drive demand. And imagine you're able to have that very informed conversation with them and be able to provide that kind of level of insights in a few, lay, few, as few, um, few layers. One is, for example, the account insights, all right? This is your top strategy accounts today, um, our sales team, for example, is able to see what their accounts are doing uh, in terms of what content they're consuming, what's the level of uh, engagement they have. Um, they, through this process, we're able to uh, acquire net new contacts, right? Contact acquisition, for example, is one of the big things we do from a marketing perspective in order to acquire more customers and because the, 
you know, bias group itself within the with, within the customer environment is actually far bigger than you know. In the past, probably three guys are the one that makes the decision, but right now it's up to eleven people in a bias group. So that discovery itself is something that happens, and we're able to extract that as a result of um, having this global demand center model. Um, we're able to see the heat map, for example. Right, every account salesperson has multiple accounts. They have the ability then to look at the heat map. And as sales management level, they're able to see how this is kind of uh, the heat map at, at a um, country level, right across the whole Asia Pacific region, for example. So this is a very, very good uh, actionable insights um, that gives the, uh, um, the account team, um, you know, um, more uh, a good, good uh, I would say, demand signals indication uh, in, terms, in terms of what their customers are looking for, their key accounts are looking for. And on the back of that, we can then start to build what we call um, uh, impact business impact correlation. Um, and I think one of the key things that marketing does, and you know, I have to prove this all the time. Firstly, there's never enough money, right? From a marketing perspective, we run. You always need more money every year. So how do you go about to your to 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 your boss, to your management, and say, look, I need you need we need to invest more money in marketing. And the best thing to do that is to bring data to the table. Because as a mathematician, by academic training, I'll tell you one thing, data doesn't lie, right? So it's important that you know you know what data you need to collect, you have a means of collecting it. And this is one of the key benefits ultimately that uh, uh, that, that we actually were able to drive uh, on the back of making this change um, to pivot towards um, making this transformation on, on the marketing side here at, at, at Microsoft. Um, you know, ultimately, I must tell you that this is a journey. All right, we started four years ago at Microsoft uh, Marketing here, and the trigger to make this change is all about the experience we wanted to deliver to our customers. Today, we're able to deliver omni-channel experience, deliver personalized content, leveraging machine learning to harness insights from the data we gathered through all these data uh, digital engagement, and ultimately delivering predictable conversion and win rates in partnership with sales. Now, that's really, really powerful. Because when you're able to do that, you earned a seat at the table with the sales team. And I would say that if I with hindsight, you look at everything that's built here, it's about empowering this marketing team to deliver greater and measurable impact to the business. And this is really, really key uh, in terms of, you know, having that, that conversation of how marketing adds value to the business. Now, you may probably be wondering, Stacey, you guys are Microsoft, you could build all these stuff. Right, I was like, yes, I agree. All right, but I would encourage you to think about where you are today, and and you can start this journey yourself, regardless of uh, the size of the business today. Honestly, um, but to be, to be candid, I think some of the things I shared today is that if you're looking at a mid-sized business to a, a, a large enterprise the business that you're running, uh, that you're in today, your organization, I think this will make a lot more sense. Uh, if you're looking more in terms of small business or small medium businesses, because your sales cycle uh, is not necessarily as complex or not necessarily as long, uh, pro the level of transformation you need to do and what you need to apply uh, in, in how you could make that change actually probably does not need to get to the level of depth that I've just uh, shared with, uh, with you in terms of what we've gone through. So it's really different degree based on where you are. Uh, in terms of your, your business and your organization today. So the, the key thing I want to leave you with is like, you know, you think about it, it's like maybe some of you already started on that journey itself uh, in your organization. Um, and some of you are thinking to start. And, you know, how do you get started, right? I think that's the, the key thing I want to, to leave you with today. And I would say that focus on three key pillars. Right, this, this, this is distilling the learnings we have here at Microsoft that I want to share this with you. And think through this on how you could apply to your environment and to your business today. And that one of the first thing that is really, really important is on the aspect of that culture. Because firstly, there needs to be a mindset change in order to be able to make that pivot. All right. 
And, and that's important because, you know, we see that organizations, organizations that are best able to go through transformation when people inside are unified and working on shared values and ideas. Having a culture that keeps teams connected is the key for a transformative process. Now we notice organizations where cultures continuously invites change and accepts the diversity of personalities and ideas and approach uh, is that is required to drive the organization forward are those that do best in transformation. And mind you, Microsoft is by no means a small company. Uh, Satya uh, uh, Nadella, our CEO, he, he started off slightly more than five years ago and he brought this uh, change to us as an organization. And culture takes years to actually literally change within the organization, especially of one of the size of, of Microsoft. I'm really very grateful uh, in terms of his commitment to make that change. So it's really, really important that when you start on this journey, you need to get the executive endorsement right at the very top level to, 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 to be bought in and be uh, convinced that, look, this is the way that we need to be, the direction we need to be heading, and this is what we need to drive as a common set of goals and outcomes as organization. It doesn't happen overnight, it is a journey, all right? And, and I would say that the culture is really also at the core of successful marketing, right? It, it's a bit like stating the obvious, but in my conversations with CMO around, around um, the region, sometimes I'm surprised to see how often they said that there's a core, the branding challenge, right? It's not just branding of the company externally, but it's also talking about the culture and how it's being embraced uh, within, within the organization itself. So that's one, one of the key pillars that, uh, that is really important that I want to, want to share. The second one is around capabilities, right? And as I shared earlier, there were a couple of challenges from the CMO perspective, you know, how do you make this change and transformation? And really it's about having the right capabilities, right? Um, uh, uh, within the organization to be able to make that change, right? And it's also thinking about that whole journey, right? Looking at the human capabilities, you know, do we have the right people, the right skills, and how are we helping them grow, right? And with, with transformation itself is not about replacing teams, but also to bring teams along, right? That's one key thing to, to, to remember. And the other aspect is also the whole operational capabilities, right? the three aspects of people, technology, and process. These three pieces are really key because you, there's an interlock between all that. You need, you need while you desire to make a change, you need to have the ability to make change where the technology comes in. But the tech is there and you have desire to change the processes you have today needs to be able to change and evolve to address the uh, to be able to be aligned to the direction that you're trying to head to. So it's important to have these pieces together in order to um, and then having that culture and that mindset, the growth mindset, for example, right, to adjust and, and make those changes. And that's really, really, really important. Um, um, second pillar that I want to share with. And the third pillar, as I just mentioned, is around the whole technology aspect of it. Um, and the key point here that I want to, um, I'm not going to just, you know, boil this slide here, but the key thing here is this, right? As marketeers, we know our customers best, right? We drive those level of engagements. We look at, you know, we understand the customer's journey. Uh, we understand, you know, we get insights in terms of uh, what works in terms of engaging with them. We get all these, we, we understand the, the, the whole customer journey itself. But on, on the other hand itself, while we understand all that, we're collecting all this information, we call it data, right? Um, you know, how are you monetizing this data? How are you monetizing the insights? How do you first extract the insights from the data and then monetize those insights? And that is essentially the heart. Right? It's a very, very critical piece. And on this, for this aspect, you do need to have the right technology, the right, in, you do need to invest in technology to, to, to be able to, to um, harness the insights. Now, do we need to invest in something like super large, expensive to just build it up? No, you don't need to. Actually today, from a marketing technology stack perspective, there are many other, there are many options in the market, right? And one of those that, uh, you know, you a quick start one, um, I know like HubSpot, for example, uh, they have a tech stack 
um, that you could, and it's cloud-based, subscription-based, right? Uh, you don't need to install even anything you know, you know, on-premise. Everything is in the cloud and it's a software-based subscription model uh, that could give you all these um, um, data points and help you build up this data, uh, um, you know, build up the database and be able to help you extract some of the insights. Of course, there are add-ons and things like that you could look at, but there are tools out there, right? Tools that you could, uh, technology tools that you could select based on where you are in, in your maturity today uh, within your organization and find those right ones to fit where you are today. And as you then grow and evolve, then you look to evolve your stack, maybe once every three years, it's about right. Once every three years in terms of looking at, hey, have we grown out of, of this, what we have today in terms of our, our marketing technology stack and what's the next change we need to move to? So it becomes a progression uh, in terms of changes. You don't need to buy a big, you know, invest a lot upfront, but it's really about growing organically. And today, especially when a lot of software are available uh, on the MarTech stack that's available um, um, pretty much uh, as a SaaS model, you actually have a lot of access to different tools, right? Um, and um, online that you can start your journey with. And last but not least, I would say that I'm going to wrap up with this, uh, this one, one, one key message here is this. The glue that brings it all together is having a vision and a strategy. The vision is perhaps the most important, right? It's what directs successful organizations towards a single North Star. And the vision is then fully articulated in the strategy. It tells everyone in the surrounding organization what you're truly working towards. And in every case, organizations that have a vision uh, that tap on, for example, the human ambition and, and sparks imagination, those are the ones that gets uh, people excited, motivated, and this is really the key to making the roadmap that clarifies, you know, how you're going to realize and work towards this vision. As marketeers, you're in a unique position to drive that, because I always believe in one thing. As marketeers, if you're not able to sell yourself and sell your idea, it's tough to sell to the customer, right? So all successful marketers, you should, you're in a good, good position to do that. The question is how understanding the key motivation, what are the changes you're trying to drive, and ultimately, how do you work towards pivoting to, to, to make that uh, vision happen? How do you build that strategy? Don't do it alone. It's very important to work with uh, your peers. You know, the sales organization, for sure, is one of the key stakeholders in this process. Sales and marketing, we are tied to the hip together and share a common vision and build a strategy together. You can actually convince your board um, and your senior management team to say, look, this is the way to go because you're convic convicted in, in terms of what impact you could drive to the business. So with that, um, I hope that was helpful and I'll just open up right now to uh, Q&A. Yeah, hi, Stasley. Thank you very, very much uh, for that very um, insightful journey through how uh, a leading organization like Microsoft led uh, the di digital transformation, I'm sure. Uh, that had inspired uh, many of the marketers uh, who was listening in. So thank you very much. I would like to remind uh, to all of you viewers who's, who have joined us online today. So please send in your questions, your clarifications, um, your viewpoints and also comments if you want to um, and uh, seek any advice or um, practical tips from uh, the, per the person who actually been instrumented in, in one of the leading uh, digital uh, organizations uh, in the world today and also not just a digital organization. Uh, Microsoft is is uh, hovering in the top 10 global brands who have you know consolidated their position as a brand business. So I think uh, two fantastic um, you know strongholds or strength uh, that we have we can learn from uh, the Microsoft journey and the Microsoft story. So thanks a lot uh, Stacy for for taking us through that journey. Um, I mean, until I have uh, some of the questions that's coming in. So Damsit, please uh, help me out uh, because I had a concern last time. I couldn't see the questions. Um, I can't see any questions still. Uh, hopefully I'll, I'll get the questions rolling in. So until then, I have my uh, own set of questions. Uh, but before that, um, you know, uh, I, I just wanted to uh, get the get the conversation started um, from where you stopped. 
right? So you stopped with a very, very important slide about vision. So Stacey, I think the, the marketers always have seen themselves. I mean, every time you speak to a marketer and tell, okay, what's your vision? The chances are the marketers always came up with vision that leads to branding, the visions that lead to consumer marketing, the visions that leads to gaining uh, positions like number one position in the world, um, you know, the largest penetrated brand in the in the market uh, and, and the largest market share uh, for the brand. But very hardly uh, you get to hear about marketers have vision to digitally transform their branding journey. Uh, what do you really see? Where is the problem? Why that we don't hear uh, so often uh, visions that are spoken about digital transformation. So where is the real gap that you see? Yeah, that's a great, great question. Uh, it's a tough one. <laughs> I, would say. Um, I would say that from my observation, at least I'll speak from my own experience in working in different organizations over the last 20 years. Often the question is, how is marketing perceived in, in, in the company, right? Do they, is it seen as um, a function? A department that runs, I say, brand outreach activities. Like I said, you know, the, like you know, telling a brand story, uh, sending out press releases, for example, you know, running customer events. Because when you think about how marketing evolved years ago, right? It is that whole kind of production Absolutely. perception with where mm -hmm. marketing sits. Yeah. And if you think about how marketing has transformed in the last 10, 10 12 years that I could see. Um, it's the concept of you're no longer just working from the so-called production support role. Right. It's actually then progressively moving towards having a more business impact conversation. Right? That's right. And yeah. I think that's the part that I find that's really important. That's a change that needs to happen. And it does change, it does vary depending on the organization. So I would encourage that, you know, every marketer, right, that's on this on, on the session today is like, think, think about that. If you're not in the environment today, if how is marketing perceived in your organization today? Right. right? Do you have a seat at the table together, the sales team and the management team? Uh, or you are you seen more in terms of, you know, yeah, you're this team that just wants production and get things done, right? It's important to uplift and, and, and to that position and, and uh, itself because when you're able to uplift that, it's talking about how you drive impact of business, it's about understanding the business itself and uh, using marketing strategy to support the business strategy. And when you're able to tie it and connect it at a level, it doesn't stop any marketer to talk about the transformation you can drive for the organization because you start talking about impact to the business. Absolutely. So thank you, Stacey. So your message is um, need to understand uh, the real impact digital transformation makes to the business. So in that case, we can uh, promote or we can inspire more marketers to talk about digital transformation because I think uh, it's a very valid point that you're making. It, it comes down to the real impact to the business. So maybe if we create more awareness, what can uh, digital transformation do to a marketing journey, then obviously we can inspire more marketers and more importantly, uh, more uh, directors, the more executive leadership team to kind of drive this as a priority agenda for the corporates. Yes, I think absolutely. I think that's that's something very, very important. So market is the message out there is that you need to jump into the driving seat. Don't wait for the ICT department to drive transformation. I don't think that's how it works. Today we are talking about how can marketers lead the way uh, as Stacey, I think, I think very, very clearly uh, demonstrated or illustrated to us how Microsoft adopt such uh, digital transformation journey uh, led by marketing in itself. So uh, great uh, tips there. So I'm, I'm going to jump into a, a question and there are uh, Sanjeeva says that this is a very important uh, session uh, for people like him who, who do really directly involved in sales and marketing. So yes, uh, Sanjeeva, I think we hope that this session is really helping you. Uh, I have a question from uh, Basit. Um, and he's commenting your presentation, a very fascinating presentation, Stacey. Thanks a lot uh, for that inspiration that you shared. 
Uh, and they also said that they've learned a lot. But he has a question is like, how can we implement or upskill, reskill our staff in Sri Lanka? Any tips or platforms uh, to upskill or reskill uh, the Sri Lankan uh, marketers or generally in employees uh, in, in this regard? Stacey, any advice you could provide to us? Sure. I mean, it's a great question. Very timely because I'm just working on a skilling for success program for my team. So right. let me just share with you uh, uh, just a couple of um, uh, you know um, thoughts I had in this area. I think firstly is we think about um, the whole transformation, right? So let's do a, a gap. I would call it a gap analysis. That's part one, right? So looking at your current state where you are today, and then you determine what's the future state you need to get to. Right, have that written out clearly. And then with that itself, you then look at what are the gaps. So for example, it said, look, uh, today I I have this challenge in terms of, um, uh, well, there's a lot of, I've got a database, right? I, once upon a time, marketing database all in Excel, right, <laughs> guys? Absolutely. Excel has been our favorite tool for a long time. So, so imagine, for example, so I've got data today um, about uh, my customer base. Uh, it could be in different you know, platforms and all that. And one of the things I need to do is uh, I need a skill set within the team uh, to be able to start organized uh, and rationalize this data itself, make sure it's clean, uh, make sure I'm able to extract, uh, connect my digital signals together with activities with 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 um, some um, what they're doing, and then they will flag this in the database. So today, for example, you've got platforms like marketing automation platform right, that actually could do this for you. So that could be you, you need to think about what the gaps are. So this example I'm giving is maybe around the whole data side of things. Then if you look at teams, I look, I don't really have someone today in the team that uh, is able to do that. So you have two options: either you hire someone with a skill. Right. Uh, and that will be a quick ramp, or you actually look at uh, what are the functional skill sets, technical skill sets that you need to uh, fill that gap, right? Uh, in order to be able to to, to address uh, or have this capability on your team, right? So if it's a database related, usually one of the key roles is a marketing ops role. Because marketing ops is one of the key roles, uh, especially if you're looking to drive more and more, you know, it's, marketing in a digital world, marketing ops is a very important function to, to have. But from my experience, not all organizations has the ability to hire a, a, a you know dedicated marketing ops person. So often it's a combination of maybe you have someone that does digital today, a digital marketer. This person will be already knowing how to collect data. The question is then what you're looking to do. Is it about organizing the data and then you need to get someone that knows how to look at this data. So maybe someone with a business analyst kind of uh, a background or business analyst kind of skill sets to be able to discern this data and be able to extract it, right, um, to provide the insights you're looking for. So I think it's important for you to kind of really assess what those um, gaps are um, and then be able to um, next identify what type of roles, okay, you're looking to, to, to build uh, within the organization. And then for each role, you actually could find, actually, if you just search online, uh, there will be the best thing is go to uh, LinkedIn. <laughs> you just search for that job role and you'll see many samples of uh, job description. And that job description will give you a sense of what the role does and more importantly, the skill sets. So that's one cheat sheet way of doing it quickly. Don't need to wreck your head. Just go online, search for it, and you can get that. This LinkedIn is a good source to find that information. So then once you have that piece, is okay, then the next question is how do you build that skills? So usually building skills are two ways. Is either you go for um, literally a, a, a class and learn, and I can't, I don't discount that. It's important to have some fundamental stuff. So you, it's important to invest in terms of uh, going for classes when it's needed. So the class is only on part. I teach you the theory portion. Then you've got to have the practical portion, right? After you learn, how do you how do you then apply? So that is the part where you kind of learn a job, right? Um, to 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 work on it. Then the other thing I could share with you is that, look, if you're kind of fresh, you're creating all these new functions or building these new roles, is that, Stacey, I don't really have experience doing this. I can have a JD, I can probably figure out what course to go to, but can I find a coach somewhere, right, that could at least help me to validate along the journey? It's like, am I working through the right way? Am I applying in the right direction? I think this forum here, 
SLIM is probably a great forum where you probably could have bring experts in certain areas, right? Uh, to talk about it because you talk about the practical aspects and the best practice, for example, you know, learn fast, fail fast. That's always my 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 uh, one of my uh, uh, mottos. Yeah. Um, and, and you leverage the community itself and right. don't underestimate the power of community because you can get a lot of insights and advice uh, yeah. through the process for you to learn. Thanks, Desi. I think just any any top of the mind platforms that you would like to recommend for people to become more, um, you know, aware or maybe for them to learn new skills in this space. Yeah, I think I not to be biased, but I find that LinkedIn learning is actually very good. There's a right. lot of free content there. You can subscribe for free and you can look for very specific topics in there. They may not right. necessarily be all kind of marketing technical skills related because some of these courses you do need to pay for it. Uh, the other uh, aspect is um, often when I Google online uh, or search online, I'm able to find, um, I can't tell you which any particular sites because there are multiple sites for different information. Uh, I find HubSpot is pretty good uh, because they write a lot of interesting articles, blogs. Right. And okay. Often uh, at Box, uh, HubSpot, they have some good um, uh, kind of how-to guides. Yeah. Uh, do some research and study every year about different topics. Uh, and you can look for some of the past um, right. content they published because it's still applicable. It doesn't change overnight. And sometimes it's, quite a, it's good for three to, three to five years in terms of uh, the insights they deliver. So I think that, that's one good place to get started. Yeah, so, so message guys, look out for LinkedIn Learning and then look out for some very informative websites just like what Stacey mentioned to you. So if you want to upskill, reskill your employees, your marketing team, that's a place to go. So on that note, um, any suggestions? I know this is a very, very broad question, but I, I maybe in maybe very simple terms, uh, this question is from Achini. She's asking any suggestion for a Sri Lankan company to become a top company like Microsoft. What would be your one advice if they want to follow Microsoft journey? Yeah, that's a great question. I have to say that one thing is uh, any company can do this, is to build a culture. That is the magic itself. I can tell you one thing, if I may take away, uh, one thing to take away here, why Microsoft is able to make this transformation, why the management team actually is on board with the need for us to make this change is because we're able to transform the culture of the company to work towards an align towards a common set of goals to deliver that, uh, um, um, you know, desired level of customer experience. And that yeah. actually then cascaded across the entire organization, every single function, every single role, we embrace and share that one common vision as a company. Absolutely. Brilliant. So actually the message for you and the, all the marketers out there, look out for your culture because we know, we've heard this quote, I've heard this quote, culture aids strategy for breakfast. Stacey, you agree with me? Yes, absolutely. Yes. Spot on. So don't let your strategy go for breakfast. Build the right culture. Definitely, you can build the next Microsoft in Sri Lanka. Why not? We always can if you build the right elements in it. So thank you for that uh, uh, very powerful uh, element that we want to focus, uh, Stacey, it really helps. So uh, there's an anonymous um, message uh, from Microsoft can push for that strategic uh, digital marketing departments in cyberspace uh, because Microsoft is a very strong brand, isn't it? So any ideas that you 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 want to share on, on this particular area of uh, whether, whether Microsoft is really thinking of something like that? Oh, what do you mean by digital? No, so I, I think what what really they're trying to understand is is there a digital uh, in in cyberspace? There is a digital marketing uh, where people can actually work with. Um, maybe uh, he he or she can clarify. I think that's what I understand. Is there a like a um, a digital marketing expertise kind of a, a service that is that is Microsoft is willing to provide? Is what I understood from the question. Oh, okay. In terms of if let's say our customers are keen to go through um, um, kind of learn, kind of adopt or learn and adopt what we have gone through in our digital marketing transformation, whether Microsoft could offer that uh, to our customers. The answer is yes, actually. Uh, so <laughs> because you know one thing is as a, as a company, and that's the thing is that we don't keep this to ourselves. That's the reason why I was able to share all the slides with you, because our intent is to share you know, the, the journey we did uh, and, and, and we had customers, actually quite a few customers and some of them are quite large global customers. I, I'm sorry, I couldn't share the names. Uh, so they came to, they came to our um, experience center 
and we told the story about what we did. So this was a customer from um, that was uh, that that came. Uh, I think this was probably two years back. So they were quite a large uh, financial organization in the financial industry. Their CMO and team came and said, "Look, I'm trying to you know make sense of how I could pull everything together and deliver the whole." transformation right you know i know the technology is important but how do you glue it and put it all together because it's a process involved the skills and capabilities you need to build and all that so they came to our our experience center and we took them through the journey we went very deep with them in terms of and we shared openly uh in terms of what we did um um and as a result of that i think we had a conversation with them for all probably about a year wow. uh, thereabouts because mind you to make these kind of changes is quite massive. You don't Absolutely. kind of make a decision and say, okay, let's go, right? Because there's a lot of impact to the whole broader business and everyone needs to come along the journey in order That's to right. make this effective. So we they spent about a year with us and I think uh, on the 15 or 18 month mark, they decided, look, thanks for the knowledge that you shared. We now have mapped out our digital transformation journey uh, and they shared with us actually reciprocating, uh, you know, in terms of what they did. And we're very pleased because they were able to harness some of the technology that we built, that we consume in house, that we basically productize it and they could use it. And then they, you know, use other technology also that kind of makes sense for them in part of the, the whole transformation journey. So the, the, the short answer is yes, we, we can do this for our clients today. Uh, but is it kind of productized in a way? The answer is no. Because every company's digital transformation journey is different. It is about your business, Absolutely. where you are, where you want to go. So it's a very, very personalized journey. Yeah. So thanks, Cecilia. There's a very related question to that that uh, response that you gave again from Marchini, uh, because you spoke about uh, how this whole digital transformation was led by marketing. Now she's asking, what are the challenges you encountered at Microsoft during the digital transformation process? <laughs> Okay, I wasn't here for the whole period when it happened, but I did have a story told to me in terms of you know lessons learned. So what happened is that uh, when 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 this vision was was um, um, spoken about a couple of years back, a few years back, and the strategy was put forth, um, we had three buckets of people in terms of the ones that yes, let's go for it, and there's a, a group that says okay, that's the way we need to go. Uh, so they kind of follow along and then there's a group that leads it, right? They're very enthusiastic. And then there's a group that I call legates. They're like, okay, is this going to work? I'm not sure. Right. So I think fundamentally, if I looked at it, that is a challenge. Right. It's the mindset. Whether people will come along and you must accept the fact that there will be some that will be legates in the team. All right. Absolutely. Do not ostracize the legates. Okay. Because sometimes... People don't move or go along the journey because they don't fully see the value, right? And some are probably a, a more, you know, show me the money before I will move, right? Absolutely. It's all different mindset and, and, and the dynamics are different. So it's important and we recognize that that group uh, in terms of they have uh, doubts in their, in their mind in terms of, well, is this really going to work? I mean, how is it going? I can't phantom it because it's a, it's a multi-year transformation. No one could see that far, right? So it's yeah, about having yeah. faith and working together with a common goal and continue to tackle all the challenges before you get there. So what we did was we brought along the groups that were not so convinced. We journeyed them along the way uh, and we skilled the ones that were, that were, that were uh, pretty much aligned with what we had. We skilled them, we enabled them, it's train the trainers, and you actually then propagate the message right across the organization. So I say if the one key takeaway is that that, that challenge was, was for the people element, um, the technology side can be quite challenging too. And again, it depends on your business because some of the things that you, we think we want to do, right? Realize that, hey, there is nothing off the shelf I can use, right? So we need to build it. Uh, unfortunately, because Microsoft is a software company, so we can build quite a lot of stuff, but we need time to build. We build it, we need to test it, you know, so it takes that whole build, test, run, build, test, run, and then you make adjustments, right? So it's having that patience also to, to uh, and really you need to be patient because even up to today, although we've built everything I showed you, we built that, but every year we're still evolving it. Yeah. I, I think over time, we've probably been trained to be more patient. <laughs> I said, 
you know, it takes time to make something. Yeah, easy. absolutely. So it, it's in, interesting that uh, even your barriers actually, it, it, it narrows down to the element that you mentioned before. It's a culture. It's the people because people make a large part of the culture. And then if you if you really get pushed back by those people who don't want to change or resist change, yes. then uh, something not just digital transformation, but I think for that matter of fact, any transformation is going to be a challenging task. Uh, sure. I mean, yeah, I've read uh, Kinichiyomi, the Japanese writer, talks about uh, how companies like Matsushita have strategic plans for 100 years. And then every single person aligned themselves for that 100 year strategic plan. Today, we can't even think of a one year plan, let alone 100 years. Right. So what's what's really happening is the transformation in itself is accelerated, right? I mean, the, the speed of transformation we knew pre COVID to post COVID. Uh, I, I don't have numbers to say so, but I am sure you would agree with me if I say it is gone over multiple times in terms of speed. Yes. Right. So uh, so now in, in a situation like this, I mean, which is which I I have a concern. I, I want a question to talk to you on. You spoke about three elements, Stacey. I really like that three words you spoke about. You spoke about a PTP, people, technology, and process. Yes. So I memorized that PTP, so I don't forget that. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> now, uh, in a in an era in a challenging era, in a context where the speed of change is so fast. One of the criticism that is always. Comes to digital transformation is that we are losing touch with people. Yeah. Right now you bought that people into that three uh, component, right? Um, every time when you talk about digital transformation, the focus is on technology. The focus is on process. My question to you, how important in this era the focus to be prioritized on people and how much of that is actually being lived in the corporate world? Yeah, that's a great question. I think one thing I'm very um, blessed actually to be at Microsoft because this is a company that is very, very focused on, on, on people and uh, developing the people. And I would say that people make the company do it that way, right? You can have the best technology in the world uh, flawless processes, but processes are also pro processes are built by people. Ultimately, at the end of the day, right? And the tech can be there, but who co needs to code it and make it happen? It's the people. Absolutely. At the end of the day, so it, and and I think one thing is you know don't don't undermine that. I mean, digital transformation at the end of the day is about delivering value, right? How how can the company make that change. I mean, yes, we had the word digital in front, but I can change the word digital or something else. It was about transformation. So why do you want to change, right? Um, and that change itself ultimately is, you know, focused in terms of what the value should be uh, that, that you uh, deliver ultimately to, the, to your customers. And and on the back of that itself, um, it's really important to, to have that conversation with the teams, right? Because you just think about it, right? Who knows our customers best? Who knows the, the market the best? Who knows the competition the best? It's your sales team, your product team, your customer experience team, you name it. It's all these people that actually knows the business well. And collectively, it, it creates that whole domain knowledge, right? The intellectual property that the business owns. Okay. Right? So it's really, really important to, to continue to yeah. recognize the team, right? Yeah. Don't, yeah. don't undermine that. And I think one thing people you should do tomorrow, right? When you go to work, thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely every single member of your team. Absolutely. So Stacey, I, I know. I mean, I made an attempt to get you to say people first, even though you mentioned three words and I won, I think. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much for that. Because when you put the three words together, I wanted or I made an attempt to highlight which is the most important one because those listeners of ours and those top CMOs or the MDs or the executive directors or the CEOs, I want that message to be driven very strongly. People come first, so get your right to the people, all right? And then look at your processes and technology because having process and technology without the right people may not really work for you. Exactly. Right? So that's exactly what I wanted to drive on that point. So I have a question. Uh, let's say an automotive company which sells vehicle maintenance product, so service station and retailers, 
by, uh, retailers. But if the company starts selling some selected set of products through social media campaigns and promotion, will this create any drawbacks to company normal business? So they're saying it's an automotive company. Uh, they're selling vehicle maintenance products. But if this company starts selling or promoting their campaigns on social media, will it create any drawback for their company's normal business process? Uh, wh where do you see? Uh, do you really see a disconnect in somebody operating in a brick and mortar? and then start selling another range of products uh, online. Is there a disconnect or you think there's a better way to do this? Right, well, I think if you kind of, well, the, the couple of ways to look at it. Firstly is um, if you look at a suite of products and services um, you have today, so you're talking about automobiles, automotive company. Yeah. And the question is like, um, you know, Although you have a traditional go to market model today, which is going through your channels, literally, um, if you're going to go direct to consumers, right? As in, is it looking to sell direct and they could actually buy from you direct? Or is you looking to do social media as a means to promote your products and services, but they still would, uh, buy it from your channels or retailers, right? So there are two ways of looking at it. It is the first scenario where you're selling, you want to pivot to the direct model. So let's say you're selling automobile uh, services and um, and you're targeting uh, a group of, um, you know, customers that are driving, uh, I don't know, BMW, uh, a Mercedes or, uh, or Toyota or something. And you've got service packages there and you want and, and, and the buying behavior right now is like, hey, you know, I, I need to service my car, right? Uh, maybe once every year you're going to sell like a service package, right? Um, it's kind of like the concept of insurance. I can buy insurance online today, right. like travel insurance and all that. So it's about buying behavior in terms of what the threshold is from the, uh, what they're willing to pay online. That's right. Uh, it can commit online, they can transact online. And if that's something you're offering and you're doing online, that's, that's, that's something viable. We can, you know, go to social as a means to reach out to your customers to promote that. But you must right. think about the impact to your channels. Because if you're selling a competing service direct and then you're selling through your channels and your channels will have the markup for margins, then that 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 will create some conflict with, with your channels itself. Right? So that's one thing to think through. But if you have differentiated products that way, some going through your, your channels today or your retailers today, and then this is something net new that you're looking to offer direct to your uh, your customers or B2C literally, then there's there's no there's no nothing stopping you from using social media as the means to uh, to to create awareness and you know drive people to click through and hopefully uh, convert that as a as a as a customer, right? If there's right. a second model talking about you using social to promote certain of the services, so they will drive, um, I would say conversion at your channels or retail level. That's good because as a principal, you're actually uh, more proactively uh, uh, supporting your channels in terms of marketing. Right. right. And you're helping them create what I call uh, funnel X leads for them. Right. They will then ultimately convert uh, uh, on their end. And actually, you can use that as an incentive model also for your, your partner. So imagine if you want to get some of your channels or reach out. Hey, guys, you could go more online. Right. So I'm going to spend some money as a principal to promote this uh, to uh, not, not just social. Right. You could promote on any sort of platform, just social as being one of them. And right. then they give your, your partners incentive that look, I can drive traffic to the to your site and people could buy it online because the service can be okay, productized online. So okay. in a way, you could kind of give your channels or retailers a match that look, you got to invest because I'm going to invest. I need to invest. We can meet halfway so I can drive. Uh, drive right. uh, so so to so summarize, Stacey, what you're saying is that that's okay. You can sell two different channels okay. as long as you understand the impact to the channel and then you don't really compromise on, on one in. So try to look at for a win win proposition rather okay. than trying to compromise on any other person while doing this. So th I think that's that's a message that's quite clear. Um, I mean, there is one or two questions before I, I just wrap up. Unfortunately, I have a list of questions now, uh, but I don't have much time. Stacey, as always, we all have a very limited time. So uh, in, in line with that, any marketing process automation tools available in the market? I would just like you to see if you can recommend anything. They, they are specifically looking at marketing process automation tools. Uh, anything that comes to your mind, top of your mind, Stacey? Yeah, I think marketing automation platforms, there are a few. The ones that's quite commonly used today, even also at Microsoft, is Marketo. Uh, and that's owned by Adobe today. 
Um, and then uh, I think there are two other platforms. I can't remember top of mind right now, but one of them I remember was um, uh, no, I, sorry, I just can't remember the name. I can, I can pick you guys the, the give you a couple of recommendations after this, uh, after this call. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Thanks. So we would like to share that in our LinkedIn uh, post um, in, in in conversation. Um, so yeah, so thanks a lot. Um, one question is that uh, again uh, from this listener, Archini. Assume you're hiring a manager. What would you prefer from a candidate? Is it practical aspect of the area or bunch of certification of that area or good attitudes? So she has given you three choices, Stacy. You need to pick between practical aspects, certifications, good attitude. I already made my choice. What's yours? OK, from my experiences, of course, you could find someone in the relevant industry and you know around the whole skill sets, right? So but if you have candidates about similar skill sets, one of the key things, or maybe there's a gap in terms of skill set, right? One of the key things or principles is this. Attitude cannot be changed, but skills can be taught. So I would always look for someone that may not necessarily have all the skill sets, uh, but a person with good attitude. And I actually can invest in training the individual um, in terms of being successful in the role. That That is what I, I've been practicing as a as a people manager. So perfect. I think uh, we are aligned there. As I told you, I also made the same choice. Attitude definitely comes first. <laughs> so <laughs> Stacey, um, I think uh, we've, we've just come to a very, very interesting conversation that I won't let you go until I ask this question. Stacey, one of the biggest criticism, at least on the Sri Lankan context, uh, that we made things very complex. You know, marketers do not adopt technology. Marketers show a lack of adaptation for digital transformation because I personally feel that we made things very complex. Now, if we speak to marketers, uh, most of the time they just tell us, listen, cut the crap. Tell me mach no machine learning, no artificial intelligence, no algorithm. Tell me a very simple place to start. You know, the very famous acronym, Keep it simple, silly. That's what yeah. marketers tell us. Yeah. No, it's too complex. Just tell where to start. We would start that. What's your advice on that? Yeah, I think the one thing, uh, the one place to start is that you do need to have a marketing automation platform. It's any MAP for short. Uh, I think I had a question somewhat uh, earlier about recommendations, right? So if you look at a marketing automation platform, I think there's the one thing, the baseline foundational piece you need to have uh, to capture all your um, customer uh, database essentially and all the signals that you have in there. Uh, I think that would be the one one good place to start. And Marketo is quite a big chunk in terms of investments of uh, the cost of putting a Marketo platform in place. There are others. Uh, let me find some of those names of those um, the platforms and share with this team here. But yeah. that's the one place I would recommend this. Brilliant. So Stacey, any information, any related articles, you can share it on the LinkedIn platform that I've posted about this today's webinar uh, so that people who's, who's listening in, you can follow the LinkedIn post on, on today's webinar by Slim and then you probably Stacey will be able to share more information. Uh, the Q&A keeps filling in, but I have to close it up. That's all time I have. So thank you very, very much, Stacey. It's been wonderful talking to you. It's an amazing journey to understand uh, the inside story of Microsoft, how and how marketing is spearheading the digital transformation. Um, it was a great session. And with that, I have to thank you very much and especially thank you Sri Lanka Institute of Marketing, the president, the council, the exco and the wonderful team uh, really worked hard, exceptionally hard to bring this series of webinars to you. And unfortunately, like every good thing has to come to an end. Today is the last session of this Future Ready Marketer live webinar series. Thank you very much for joining. Thank you for all our supporters. Thank you for all the sponsors and the organizers behind the scene, especially the marketing and the membership division of SLIM um, and all others who, who are involved in bringing all this expert knowledge uh, to your uh, home uh, over the last couple of Thursdays. So thank you very much for joining us. Stay tuned. This is not the only thing that Slim is going to bring you. We're going to bring in a lot of other insightful sessions in the future. But from a future ready marketer's perspective, it's time to bid goodbye to all of you. Until we meet again, stay safe, take care, and stay well. Good evening, everyone. Thank you, guys. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Stacey. Thank you very much. Bye bye.